Hi, my name is Dave, and today I'd like to show you a Takahashi TS-65. This is the original, the Primo, first Takahashi from 1967. This is the model right here. Let's have a look at the basic features of this scope. Standard uh, German Equatorial type mount. Here's your slow motion. Let me lock it down here and show you the slow motion. Takahashi feel. Just superb. Top quality. Really, really, really nice. Very uh, secure. Really secure feeling when you're operating the scope. And the Takahashis have a uh, many of them at least, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but many of them have a, uh, a sort of a limited tangent motion, which is fine, it's totally acceptable. You lock it down here and then you have declination motion right here. And uh, let me turn that around and show it to you. Maybe I'll just turn the whole mount around and show you there. Well, let's do that. So you've got your lock over here and then you got You've got a limited amount of travel in here, but this is a nice, really secure, really easy to control, very, very nice. Uh, so, nice, Takahashi. One thing, <laughs> one thing that's tricky about this scope is this. These are your locks for the altitude when you're setting the, uh, right, uh, when you're setting the polar, <laughs> it's a little, Oh, <laughs> a little dangerous. I almost dropped it. <laughs> I don't know how many people have dropped these things. I don't know how much danger there is of that, but these are nice big lever arms, but still, uh, I'd rather have something a little bit more secure there. Uh, a <laughs> little dangerous, especially for somebody like me. Uh, nice big setting circles. Of course, uh, setting circles are, are mostly decoration, to tell you the truth at least in this size, in big ones, you could use them, I've actually used big ones. But uh, these are nice. Uh, one of the most interesting things about this scope is uh, it's got a piggyback camera mount, which is wonderfully, <laughs> you can change it around, you move your camera around, it's wonderfully flexible, like that. Uh, you could even put a ball head on there and do some other weirdness if you wanted to. Uh, although that would probably do the trick for you. I still haven't quite figured out the purpose of this counterweight. Uh, at first I thought it was so that you could move the scope back in the tube and then it wouldn't be blocking. But even a wide angle lens, this is a 50 millimeter lens, and even a wide angle lens here doesn't see the end of that telescope. <laughs> I really don't know what the counterweight is about. You could also put it back here, move the whole thing up a little, uh, make it a little bit shorter. I honestly, I really, I'm a bit puzzled by all that. Maybe I'll figure it out, I don't know. Uh, and of course, here's your... Beautiful Takahashi knobs. It's interesting that the knobs and all of this hardware, not much of this has changed <laughs> over all these years. This is from 1967, and things have not changed very much. The basic uh, form of some of these things, at least the slow motion, is the same. Here's the packing scheme for the TS-65. The spreader is stored right in here. Three legs. That's the OTA. This is the tripod head. The eyepiece is in here. There we have it. This is pretty rare. Uh, the Unitrons almost always came with a set of solar screens. Well, the Takahashi's, it was an option. You had to pay extra for it. And you can see why these things are, <laughs> look at how overbuilt this is. Takahashi all the way, big, beefy, strong. Here are the actual screens. 
These are monsters. These are comparable to the size you might see on a four inch Unitron. Great big solar screens. Just for comparison, here are the solar screens from uh, Unitron 60 millimeter scope, just to give you a sense of the size difference. Everything on the Takahashi is overbuilt, overdone, super strong, super robust. Here we have the TS-65 next to a more recent Mead 285 60 millimeter F900, about the same telescope generally. But notice how much lighter the Mead is. It's, everything is much lighter weight. Look at the size of the counterweight compared to this one. Uh, this is very robust, very sturdy. You can tell, look at that thing, it's just wobbly as it can be. So you can pick this one up with one hand. This one, it's a struggle, but I can kind of get it up there. Anyway, it's a whole different ball game. This one is a much lighter weight telescope. Uh, the only thing that this one has that this one doesn't is this strange little uh, <laughs> innovation here. Well, not strange, it's actually very useful. This thing here, you can adjust the polar angle. It's got a little lever arm in there and so forth. Uh, I guess during the time at that era, in that era, it just wasn't commonly done for telescopes to have that kind of adjustment. It came along just a few years later. The later models of the TS-65 have that. Uh, I'll show them to you. This will give you a far better viewing experience. Takahashi emphasized that in their advertising. You need stability, and they're absolutely right. The more stability you have, the better. They overbuilt the heck out of everything. This thing is sort of marginal at best. You might be able to technically call this in a roughly equivalent telescope, but this telescope doesn't really compare to this one. They're quite different beasts. Here are the eyepieces that come with this scope. A 25 millimeter Kellner and a 12 millimeter Kellner. Um, for the time, very acceptable eyepieces. Nowadays would be considered very passe, very narrow field kind of view, um, but very usable, good good quality, um, and a 965 star diagonal. Here I have two TS-65 mounts set up next to each other. This is an older one, not sure quite where it dates from. This one is from 1969, I'm pretty sure, which is uh, about two years into the production run of the TS-65s. Um, this one has to be older than that because it's more primitive, as you'll see. The older mount here has the um, old-fashioned kind of, it's not a captive screw, it's something you have to find this in the middle of the night and find the hole. Oh man, it usually takes me about five minutes to figure out where that goes. It's a pain. Um, this one, the slightly newer one, has a more traditional slide-on arrangement, like that. And in both cases, the declination slow motion is a slide-on, like that. Here on the old mount, this is the mounting housing for the worm gear, and goes in against the worm wheel inside there. So the worm wheel has a certain spacing. And it's, it's pretty much stuck where it is for this one. With this one, you can adjust the placement of that and the tension on that with these pressure screws here. So this mechanism, the only purpose for the, all this mechanism here is to push down on that and to adjust. That allows you to adjust the backlash in the right ascension. There are instructions on a mimeograph sheet of paper for how to do that that came with this mount. Um, so that shows you that this was an afterthought. 
On the older mount, the end of the counterweight shaft simply has a pin driven through there. It's permanent, or se at least semi-permanent, and it's intended to hold the counterweight on, of course. On the newer one, it's been revised, so there's now a fairly standard. If you've seen a Takahashi, you've seen one of these screw-on type locking nut to keep the counterweight on. On your left, we have here a Royal Astro mount uh, from uh, about the same era as the Takahashi. Uh, maybe a little older or a little newer, not sure. But you can certainly see uh, a lot of similarities, basic design principles and so forth, uh, like so and like so. Very, very similar kinds of scopes in many mounts and in, in many respects. It's easy when you're looking at pictures of scopes to get confused and think this one's a Takahashi and vice versa. So just be aware that there are differences, clear differences in uh, the placement of the setting circles and uh, the, the uh, worm wheel is covered on this one. It's open on this one. Probably the most distinct difference. Um, so there are differences, but it's uh, maybe easy to get tripped up about that. On your left, here we have the uh, Vixen Polaris, very highly regarded and much renowned mount. Um, held anything up to, I believe they put a six inch on this, on this mount. And I'm just showing you this to compare with the TS-65. Look at how robust the TS-65 is. It's uh, quite comparable to the Polaris mount. Uh, this was meant for a 65 millimeter F900 or so. This one could hold anything up to a, a nice, big, healthy scope. Um, so I think you'll agree that the Takahashi mount is considerably well constructed. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Takahashi TS-65 from 1967. Thank you very much for watching.